If you've been looking for something exciting and new to try on your grill or smoker, this is the video for you. Hey guys, I am Steve, the Cookout Coach, and we're here to help you take your barbecue to the next level no matter what you need. Today what we're gonna be talking about is a next level thing when it comes to smoking and grilling, and that is heritage breed animals. Specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about Berkshire hogs. We're gonna be cooking up some Berkshire St. Louis style ribs. Now to begin with, a heritage breed animal. What is that? Well, basically it's just a specific breed of animal that typically dates back for a long time, hence the heritage part. Berkshires are a real popular hog that's been raised in America for a long time. They have specific features to the breed that make them desirable. For instance, when we're talking about Berkshires, we're talking about great fatty marbling, which you're really gonna see in these ribs. They're also a hog that grows a really long belly. And if you think about it, why is that? Well, that's so they can harvest all that belly meat and make delicious bacon. And of course, right behind all that highly marbled belly are your delicious spare ribs. Now I'm lucky enough to have a Berkshire farm right down the road from me here in West Virginia called Daystar Farms. To this day, probably the best pork chop I've ever had came from Daystar Farms, but today we're gonna to be doing a first, which is cooking some of their Berkshire hog St. Louis cut spare ribs. I can't really describe these things, you just have to see them, so let's get right into it. What I've got here is a package, it's a two pack and it weighs just under four pounds, which means each rack of these ribs is gonna weigh under two pounds, which is very thin for a rack of spare ribs. If I've got my choice, I want a rack of ribs to be up closer to that three pound mark. But since these are special ribs, we're gonna make the exception. We're gonna just be very careful and make sure we don't dry them out, but still get them tender. Now, if you look at these, these are just amazing with inner muscular fat. It almost looks like it's 50-50. The second rack you can see kind of looks like we left some belly meat on it. If I flip it over, it looks like we're cut a little bit further back in the rib. It's no big deal. If it's coming from a, a smaller butcher, which a lot of times these sort of heritage small batch kind of meats are, the cut might not be the same as what you're used to from a large plant that you get in the grocery store. But I'm going to be honest, I'm not mad that they left some belly meat on the front of this. We're going to cook it up, get it tender just the same. So to prepare these, really, I'm not gonna cut that much off. This is, this is not a competition style cook. I do a lot of competition ribs. I've cooked a lot of competition ribs and test ribs recently. Today is gonna be a more relaxed, more indulgent sort of cook. I'm just gonna kick off some of these very, very thin ends because I know they're gonna burn up. And I'm not even gonna remove this membrane just because I don't wanna take the chance of messing up an already thin rib. We're gonna score it is all we're gonna do. Now to season these up today, we're gonna to keep it real simple. We're gonna use Cosmos Q Dirty Bird and go pretty light for me. And then again, because this is a special cook, we're gonna break out the Cosmos Q Sweet Honey Pecan. This is my favorite rub from Cosmos. It's probably the sweetest rub from Cosmos, so you gotta be a little bit careful with it. And I hoard mine for competition pork, it's amazing. You've gotta be on the Cosmos list of emails to sort of know when it's coming out because it's small batch, but when it does, it sells out instantly, so get on that list and watch for it because it's my favorite rub. We're gonna flip it over. We're gonna hit the front side a little more heavily, but still very light. We really wanna see how this pork tastes. This is gonna be very decadent, very delicious, and I'm very excited to try it. Now with those seasoned up, we're gonna let them sweat for a little bit while we bring up our Char Griller Gravity 980 to 350. And I wanna go clear up to 350 because I want to get this heritage breed rendering. We need to get that connective tissue breaking down at a quick rate so that we can tenderize it before it dries out. I'm gonna add three good sized pieces of hickory here and just let that cooker come up to temp. As it hits 350, we go on and we're just gonna let these go. Now I am gonna check on them about every 25 minutes just to make sure that we're doing okay, but there's a lot of fat that needs to break down here, so we're just gonna let it do its thing. At the hour mark, if you look at these, there's so much fat pulling on top of these. What I've decided to do is re-season a little bit with Dirty Burb, and I'm gonna flip these ribs over to let that fat drain off and help it render out more. At an hour and a half, we have what I believe is pretty good color, and I wanna get these in some foil to help tenderize even more. So basically, we're gonna keep this very simple. We're gonna put on a little bit of Cosmos Q apple cherry rib glaze, and just a little bit of Dirty Bird to help keep those flavors going. Wrap them up tight, back on the cooker. There's no extra sugar, there's no extra apple juice. I want these things to taste like Berkshire pork, but we need the assistance of that steaming effect to really get them going. This will really help with the tenderizing of the product. 
I checked them in at half an hour on the wrap, they were still a little tight, so another 15 minutes to 45 minutes on the wrap, they were feeling great. So let's get them onto the rack of the 980 and give them a little glaze with some Cosmos Q Op-X1. And after five minutes, they are shining up and looking gorgeous. Nothing left to do now but get them to the cutting board, cut them up, and let's have our taste test. All right, the time has come. I'm really excited for this. I've been waiting to try these ribs for almost a year now. Um, so here we go. Okay, the obvious first. Clean bone, good bite. It's starting to chalk up, the bone is, which means I was right on the edge of pushing it too far, um, but we got it tender, which is the harder thing to do with these heritage breeds. The flavors are great, the Dirty Bird, the Sweet Honey Pecan for just a little extra sweetness, that Op X1, it's a great, like all around barbecue sauce. It's got sweet notes, but it's also got the smoky notes. It's fantastic. Here's the interesting part to this particular rib. There is almost a bacon-esque flavor to it. That's the only way I can really describe it. Um, you know, there were large amounts of, of pork fat in this. We talked about that, we showed you that. I've cooked other um, heritage breeds and they've definitely got more porkiness. This one, for some reason, reminds me a lot of bacon. It, it just has that and it's really, really good. This is definitely a unique rib, nothing like I'd ever really had before. We kept this cook extra simple. We just ran it hot on the Chargoiler Gravity 980 because I knew we needed that high temp to break down this heritage breed rib. Definitely try some different breeds of pigs. This is the fun part to be like, I do a lot of competition because competitions are fun. The other fun part is trying out all the different varieties of barbecue that we can make. Today we made Berkshire ribs. I make Duroc ribs a lot and I love those too for different reasons. Now, like I told you in the beginning, I absolutely adore ribs. Ribs are the whole reason I started to cook barbecue. But hey, maybe if you're more of a pulled pork person, maybe over here, let's talk about some pulled pork.